day 17, linking leads. It is the season, so I thought before we get too close to Christmas, it'd be fun to talk about um, blinking lights for the various Christmas decorations. Uh, this is a, a very quick, simple circuit. It's as old as the hills, you'll probably see it everywhere. You might be more familiar with it drawn uh, like this with the BJT. Um, but I've decided to use a MOSFET in this case. I'm using a 2 and 7000. It's got reasonable drain current limit so that we can uh, flash large strings of series parallel connected LEDs. But uh, I've I've added a, a little bit of a, well, something different anyway. I've awed together multiple oscillators, all running at different frequencies to produce a sort of a chaotic blinking. Now, over here we have the practical circuit, which we'll talk about a bit more in a moment. But uh, it's very simple, and I'm probably going to build some Christmas decorations with it. But uh, for now, this is just the prototype, and works pretty well. How does it actually work? Um, uh, it's easier probably to see with the BJTs, but it's essentially the, the complementary pair that we've seen in many other circuits in this series. The um, the PMP, it may start with the capacitor discharged, the, um, the PMP is cut off because the um, the emitter base junction is reverse biased as the uh, this capacitor charges through this resistor, so that this is obviously connected to the positive supply as we see up here, so the, the voltage here is you know, approximately mid-rail. I've selected these to be mid-rail but you can change these values and it controls the exact set point. Eventually the, uh, the emitter voltage rises to the point where the uh, emitter base junction is forward biased and the transistor turns on. As it turns on it provides um, some base current to the NPN or in this case the uh, voltage on the gate of the, uh, the MOSFET. The complementary device turns on and pulls down the, um, the transistor is essentially a regenerative circuit with positive feedback at that point and the whole thing slams on until this capacitor discharges through the gate and through this resistor uh, through the emitter and through this resistor and then it'll uh, cut off because the bias here has been pulled down as well through you know, this resistor and the load. It's important that the load has some kind of resistance in it otherwise it'll pull you know, enormous amounts of current. In this case I've just used a 1k resistor because the this is the oscillator side of the board, if you like. Over here, we've got three different stages. They've all got different capacitor values, so they uh, oscillate at different rates. This is important because they'll tend to um, injection lock each other, particularly if the power supply impedance uh, is a bit high, or they will injection lock each other through the actual LEDs as well. Now, what I've done to isolate you know, the oscillators a little bit from the loads is I've put a whole bunch of steering diodes in. So each LED is connected to up to three of the oscillators and when the oscillators um, you know, allow the, the load to have some current the LED will, uh, will be steered through these diodes as we see here. You can have as many as you like. I'm probably going to do things with three is a good number. Um, five, you know, odd numbers tend to work pretty well but uh, Anything more than three, it looks quite chaotic, even though it's uh, it's not. It's well, it is deterministic, but the oscillators themselves drift past each other. Even if you used oscillators with this, exactly the same component values, you'll find that they they do drift past each other. But the tendency for them to injection lock, particularly for running off batteries and the batteries get weak, is much higher. Uh, for as far as the actual load goes, you can series up as many LEDs as you've got voltage supply to run um, and you can parallel up as many as you've got limits on the drain current or the uh, the collector current of the MPN and select the uh, the load resistor appropriately most LEDs can only take 20 milliamps although in this particular as you can see that the pulse is quite short so you could probably up it to 50 milliamps or more if you've got the um, any information on the particular LED, and most of my LEDs are straight out of the junk box or I've ordered them in bulk units on eBay or something like that, but if you uh, if you do happen to have the data sheet of your LED, you can calculate, uh, it may come with a graph that indicates its power handling in um, pulse situations as opposed to continuous, otherwise you can estimate it based on uh, its continuous rating and the duty cycle that it's actually operating at, but 20 milliamps is plenty bright, I mean these things are ridiculously bright running here only at a few milliamps, so choose the um, add up the, all of the forward voltages of the LEDs which you can measure just with a multimeter or a 1k resistor or something measure the voltage across the LEDs add them all up as long as that's less than your power supply plus the saturation voltage say a volt or so for the, the switcher circuit then it'll actually work and it'll, it'll they'll come on then um, 
you know, aim for 20 milliamps and use Ohm's law V equals IR to calculate the resistor that you need. And uh, away you go. The, you can, as long as you don't blow up the transistors, and again, the transistors are taking pulses as well, so a lot of MOSFETs have uh, bigger pulse current ratings than they do continuous. Data sheet is your friend, as always. Alrighty, this is a quickie. Um, that's about it for today. We'll uh, come up with something else, and when I do build some Christmas related decoration with these things, I'll, uh, I'll post a quick update video showing what I came up with. Alrighty, have fun. Bye.